Hey guys, welcome back to the Pass Money Plan. I'm Alex S. Kirby. Uh, today we're going to be talking about homeowners who held on to 3% mortgages are becoming accidental landlords. Now, this was Kirby Stock Pick. So, what does this mean? So, in 2020, post COVID, post COVID, pre COVID, interest rates, mortgage interest rates was around four, low fours. <laughs> And then once COVID happened, we got interest rates down to the two uh, lowest I heard was like 2.3%. Um, people might heard the lower, but whatever. Uh, so we got down to two, two fives, threes, as far as interest rates. And then so you saw people navigating all over the country and things like that, buying property, you know, to live in and, you know, out of their home state, like people from California moving to Texas, Arizona, Nevada. Florida and buying homes there, living there and working remote. And so now they have these two or three percent interest rates. And then now the problem is, and well, it's not really a problem, but what's going on is with the economic cycle tightening up, uh, you have more companies and most of these people were remote workers. So you got people that lived here, but worked in New York remotely or in vice versa, other, other states and things like that. So they lived in the where their home base was the you know high cost of living places the Californias the New Yorks and things like that and then they moved to lower cost places like you know Texas Nevada Arkansas Utah all those places the Florida lower cost of living so with the economic cycle tighten up and then now corporations are asking or requiring their employees to come back into the office at least three times a week these people that was remote workers here or in another state have to move back to their home base if they want to keep their job. So now the question is, do I sell this house? Highly likely at a discount than what they could have got back in, you know, 2020, 2021 to just sell and offload it. Or do I hold on to the house because I have a two or three percent interest rate? rent it out and then move back or do i just quit the job altogether and just pay this low mortgage rate and get a job in the local area that i'm in and that's the dynamic that people are going into and the thing is is that two three percent interest rate when they give that up they're not ever getting it back again so people thinking well i want to keep my interest rate because i can't get the price that i want for the house because of course whoever buys the house will be paying a higher interest rate and will be paying two or three times a month more than what the person who owned the house currently pays. And people are just not paying that. So they're using that mortgage rate, that two, the two to 3% interest mortgage rate as an asset in itself. And then now they're becoming landlords because they can't sell their properties for the price that they want to. Okay. That makes more sense. So people are actually renting out their homes. So. Okay. Well, yeah, they, they're going, they, they stuck with the dilemma. They stuck with the dilemma. Some people are becoming landlords because they can't sell the price. So let's say, for instance, somebody bought a house here in Florida. Let's just use 20, let's say 2021. Let's just use that as the date, as the timeline. 2021, they pay $600,000 for it. So let's say $600,000, $600,000, 30 years at a, let's just say a 2.8% interest rate. Okay. So... That's 24, that's 24.65. 24.65. That's how much they're paying per month. Right. And then so now let's fast forward to 2023. Supply is low, demand is low because of higher interest rates. And then let's say, let's just say, for instance, they wanted to sell the house for 600000 They will take a loss. Understand, they will take a loss if they sell it for the same thing they bought it for. Because remember, when they bought the house, they paid $600,000. But 6% went to the buyer and seller agent and then other closing costs and things like that. So if they sell it for $600,000 again, they still got to pay those costs and a little bit more because, of course, you know, people are going to want to, uh, people are going to want, you know, repairs and, uh, you know, you know how inspections go, stuff come. But that same $600,000 house now at today's interest rate, and we just going to put 7%. 7% is 4025 dollars So even if they, so it's roughly double what they paid, almost double what they paid 
per month. So people don't want to pay $4,000 a month. Then they don't want to pay the $600,000 because it's above the median. So prices are coming down above the median. So people are like, I can't get the price to at least break even on my property. So I'd rather just rent it, you know, $2,500, $2,600 a month or maybe even $3,000 a month. And then go back to my, you know, place of work that they say I got to be in office at. Okay, yeah. Instead of just offloading because they, they'll never get those rates again. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Man, and that's even, yeah, that's that's crazy because I was looking at some mortgages for, say, $250 um, with, say, 7% interest rates. The, the, the price was like $2,200 a month. And that's uh, you know, that's com two fifty compared to six hundred thousand. That's almost the same monthly payment, and just because of the interest rates. And then you think about it: we in an economic tightening cycle, like we just said in a previous video. Lending requirements are getting harder, yeah. not getting easier. It's getting harder. You know, now they want more down payments. I mean, of course, you got the FHA's and things like that. Um. So all that, all those dynamics is coming into play. So the person who bought, you know, 2021, 2022, you know, it's hard for them to unload for the price that they bought it for, because of course the interest rates was lower. So the price they can, the person who they bought it from sold the price at a higher rate. Now interest rates has doubled, almost tripled where they, where they, where they bought it at. So how interest rates work, interest rates rise, the value should come down some. So, these people are at break even or losing and they don't want to lose their property or the interest rate at a loss. So they're just holding on to it. And a lot of people will navigate because people are, you know, used to that same paycheck. People will navigate and move back to their uh, home state where they work at to meet the obligation of, you know, three days of working from home, living there and doing that. So now they have a mortgage, a mortgage. I'm just going to say here in Florida, because a lot of people navigate to Florida. They're going to have a mortgage here in Florida for 2.7%. Then they might rent or buy again in their home state. So they got to pay in New York. You got to pay the high uh, rental rate or you got to buy a house with high uh, mortgage rate. And how do you, so now you haven't, you having to pay for two places. How do you supplement one of the incomes is you now become a landlord. So this is how people become accidental landlords. And a big dynamic of that is the workforce corporate America is making people come back to the office. You see that in the Facebooks, you see in that in the financial sector, you see that in the Googles, the Snapchats, the Twitters, all, the, all that people come back into the office. And a lot of these people, they they believe they gained the system where I can make New York or California money and go live in Arkansas where I'm paying pennies on a dollar. And then now they're saying, oh, now you got to come back home. So these people are stuck with a dilemma. Do I quit my job in this high income space and then move to let's say Arkansas and then I'm making pennies on a dollar compared to what I was making in New York or do I keep the house here or I can sell a house at a loss which most people don't want to do because they got a, a favorable interest rate or do I, or the next option is do I rent this property out and then move back to where I'm at and I think a lot of people will move back it will be some that's just rebels and then they're just going to say no I'm staying where I'm at but a lot of people are just becoming landlords because they don't want to get rid of that interest rate or they don't want to sell their house for a loss. And then now they got obligations of paying for living in the state where they work and then the property where they moved to during COVID to take advantage of the system. So now more people are moving to the landlord space by accident. I actually know someone who uh, is doing that. They have a 3% interest rate on their house and they, they moved out and they're renting it. But, you said, do you know somebody? Yeah, I know somebody at work that's that's doing that. Yeah, that's that's what's happening it, because it don't make sense for them to get rid of it because actually you're paying twenty twenty prices, you're paying twenty twenty two prices for or mortgage or debt on an asset, and then now interest rates are at six seven percent, so you're damn near getting that house almost for free. It's free to borrow that money because interest rates are so much higher. So why not hold on to it? And I'm not saying everybody, how long it will last because of course life creep happens and then they move back to their home state. And then, you know, 
their obligations and stuff come higher and higher and higher. And then they probably don't want to deal with being having a rental property. Because like we always talk about, one rental property don't do nothing for you. And then you're going to have headaches. You're going to have tenants mess up stuff. And you're going to have to fix it. And then you're renting it out just to break even. It'll last for a little while. But a lot of these people that's exiting the landlords don't want to be in it for the long game. So they're hoping for interest rates to drop, the value can go higher so they can sell it. Or eventually they're just going to get tired or they're not going to be able to afford to deal with the rental obligation and the obligation where they're at. And then they're going to just start offloading and say, man, forget it. This stuff sucks. So, but right now they're just choosing to be a landlord because, you know, you got all these videos out here saying, oh, being a landlord is great. It's the easiest thing ever. It's like sleeping and money just showing up in your mailbox. <laughs> it's not that simple, but that's what they believe. So. Mm -hmm. They got they they're into that mindset, but after you know a year or two pass, and they look at it and be like, "Uh, I'm just here, just making sure somebody else got a place to stay because I'm making no money out of it." And then again, like I said, life creep happens. You know, once once uh, one of these stiff hurricanes come in Florida, and then a piece of your roof fall off, and then you don't want to pay that hurricane insurance, or you do pay it, and then your insurance rate goes up. And then now there's money coming out of your pocket, then they want to they they'll change their mindset on, especially for the people in Florida. Different states got different problems, you know, hurricanes, tornado, I mean tornadoes and stuff in, you know, the the uh, Midwest part of the world and the Arkansas and the Oklahoma's and things like that. So it's just do they want to go through the do they want to go through that landmine? But right now it sounds good. I mean, they're in a good position because of the disparity in interest rates from where they bought to where it is today. So that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.